and a group of construction workers meet an unexpected obstacle when they come to change the baseball field lights. This is way outside my knowledge, so I've never done anything like this. When Animal Precinct returns on Animal Planet. In New York City, the ASPCA deal with animal cruelty, but its director of operations, Mike Pastore, and his team at Animal Care and Control, who handle animal rescue. Pastore's in the Bronx on his way to help out a baseball team with a wildlife problem. Not major league, but minor. At the Throgs Neck baseball field, workers from the Department of Design and Construction need help. The goal is to start to change some of the lights and uh, some of the rewiring. But before the workers can tackle the lights, they have to deal with a flock of Quaker parrots who have nested in them. Pastori has brought in parrot specialist Mark Johnson to assist. How long do you think they've been up there? Do we have any, any idea on that? Well, the, the actual Quakers have been in the greater New York area for something over 30 years. These wild parrots originate in Argentina and are only found in metropolitan areas, probably due to pet parrots being released. They survive the winters by living off bird food tables, and local residents want to make sure the birds aren't harmed. What, what are the chances that when they go up there, there's, they're going to come like right at them? I mean, his, you know, their face is going to be so. within like two feet of them. Well, from what I've seen uh, in the past at the, uh, the uh, Quaker nest teardowns in Connecticut, the minute you get up there, all the adults will leave. Now, whether they will have the guts to come back and challenge who, who's ever tearing apart their nest or not, I don't know. Changing the lights and rescuing the parrots looks like being a tricky operation. Heading up the construction team is Mike Kenny. We're going to go up and film what's inside the nest for us before we do anything. Then we're going to come down, we're going to have another meeting when that's all done and we'll go over. We'll mark what's up there and we'll lay it out and then we'll decide because we got experts here that have this way outside my knowledge. So I've never done anything like this. So I'm here to hear what everybody has to say, make a decision how to do this with little impact on the birds as possible. The first stage of the operation is to find out if there are any young birds or eggs at risk. A camera is pushed into the nests to gather evidence. They're kind of probing right now just to see what they have going on there. Uh, and then we'll come, they'll come down and we'll kind of set up a better game plan. We're just standing by because some debris is starting to fall now. And just in case any of the fledglings decide to pull a, a Brody and, you know, shoot down, get a chance at may possibly catching them. We'll like up and sort of down into a chamber. Primarily we'll be... Uh, collecting any eggs. We'll be candling the eggs to make sure they're fertile. If they're not fertile, then we'll destroy them. And if they're fertile, then we may attempt to uh, hatch them. That's a, a difficult process. And then we will um, take any of the, in the small baby birds and actually hand feed them every three hours until they are capable of eating on their own. The camera reveals that there are young fledglings and eggs in the nests. Mark Johnson and his team will care for the rescued birds. But the problem is how to get them down safely. Out in the Bronx at the Throgs Neck baseball field, construction workers are dismantling the nests of a flock of Quaker parrots because they need to change the field lights. Director of Operations for Animal Care and Control, Mike Pastore, is working with both the DDC and specialist parrot organizations to protect the birds. Yeah, right now, they're, they're pulling apart the nest, a lot of sticks. Um, looks like a complete massacre of a nest here. There's even some, one of the neighbors that came out questioning, what are they doing, what are they doing? But in reality, they're going about it delicately, more so than they could have just taken a big piece of machinery and shoved the whole thing aside. Sounds like he might have a baby up there. Sounds like uh, he's signaling there might be a baby up there, so there is, he's got, maybe has one now, he's gonna put it in the basket. Pastori's main concern is that a frightened young fledgling could fall from the nest. Uh. Uh. 
the young bird manages to fly, but hits into a wall. Steve Baldwin from Brooklyn Parrots races to assist the bird. The young parrot seems to have survived his virgin flight. He's, he's a good, he's okay. He's really active. He's trying to climb around, which suggests he's not injured. His, his keel feels fine. He's um, almost ready to have left the nest, which is why he flew so well all the way across the field. The whole thing with a fledgling is learned mostly with flying. Bir flying comes naturally to birds. It's learning how to stop and land that they need all the practice with. Oh, they got another one. He just pulled. He, he just pulled. Oh man, two more. There's still two more. More young birds are rescued. It's a great team effort. Well, this is the way it's supposed to go. People are supposed to work cooperatively. No, there's no need to go in there, uh, bash things around, and possibly injured animals. You take a little extra time, and you get the work done. Colonies of wild Quaker parrots are a growing phenomenon in New York. As the birds originate in northern Argentina, they can withstand the cold winters. It's a result of people releasing unwanted pet parrots. I think more and more people are learning parrots live long, they're noisy, they're dangerous. The novelty of having a pet parrot wears off after um, a couple of years. Luckily, the parrots, although non-native, are not invasive. There are five baby parrots and one egg left, so they'll be coming down. <laughs> These are much younger, much younger. In all, over 30 fledglings are rescued from the nest, plus a clutch of eggs. They're going to live in an open aviary. They'll be well taken care of. <laughs> I'm just seeing if there's, a, if there's a chick inside. This one doesn't, light? doesn't, yeah, this one doesn't look... Um, these two both look viable. <laughs> okay. I, I, I mean, you can incubate all three of them. I'm going to incubate all three of them, yeah. Okay. We have more uh, paper towels. One of the DDC workers is amazed by this close encounter with the natural world. <laughs> they're, they're, they're slippery little things, I must say, you know? And you know what? They're, like, really warm. I mean, they're almost hot. When you, when, when you pick them up, they're, like... They're like, and they're clinging to each other then, because what's happening is you're trying to get, and you gotta like wiggle them apart because they're clinging to each other. They don't want to go. Man, I was sitting there. I was like, Here's a perfect example of a, a conflict between, you know, the city and nature. The lights have to be changed. These birds decided they were gonna nest in the lights that the city put up. So the best of both worlds at this point is to get the job done and not harm any of the animals. And that seems to be what, what we're accomplishing at this point. These even younger? Yes, these are even younger. Some of the birds are as young as two days old. He's got a full crop. You can see this is his parents have just fed him, which we're lucky with. No eggs, no more chips. They're cute, right? Yes. The day was definitely a success. We rescued about 32 of the uh, birds and Parrot's uh, Parrot Foster Group is going to take them and really do the bulk of the work and take care of them. And the Throg's Neck baseball team. Several weeks ago, construction workers changing the floodlights on a baseball field dismantled the nest of a flock of Quaker parrots. Over 30 young fledglings were rescued. Out in Massachusetts, Mark Johnson of Foster Parrots Limited has been caring for the young birds. Hey guys, don't be scared. Well, actually, it's it's kind of a good thing that um, they are showing so signs of being more independent and being a little frightened of people, because up to this point, they've been completely dependent on me. Um, we've been hand feeding them for five weeks. Uh, it's a slow process, and basically you take them from three feedings a day down to two feedings a day, down to one feeding a day, which we'll do in a few minutes. We'll give them their only feeding of the day. The rest of the time, they have to come out and start looking for food on their own. Anybody want something? Yeah. 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 Now, the thing is, I'm... I can't guarantee giving them all the same amount. But what we do is just feed until they, until nobody's begging anymore. Mark still hopes that the birds will eventually be returned to their home in the Bronx. 
Although they are not native to New York, the birds are non-invasive and are enjoyed by their local community. I think what we'd like to do is see them through the winter, give them the best chance we can at surviving, and then put all 33 of them back, as opposed to only releasing the 10 that we were originally planning on these. These lucky Quaker parents can look forward to a warm and well-fed winter before returning home to Throgs Neck. Anybody want something?